morning. So happy to have you all with us today in our snowy morning. Um, do you prepare your hearts and your minds to worship God as Jan plays for us? Would you please stand? Our service begins on page two in the book of, I mean, in your bulletin, um, and page 78 in the book of Common Prayer. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths will proclaim your praise. Glory Amen. to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come on, Please be seated. Please join me in reciting Psalm 78, verses 1 through 7, breaking of the asterisk. Hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. That which we heard and known, what our forefathers have told us, we will not hide from their children. We will recount to generations to come the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord. He gave his decrees to Jacob and established a law for Israel. That the generations to come might know, and the ch children yet unborn, so that they might be put their trust in God. And not forget the deeds of God, but keep his commandments. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading for today is from the book of Joshua, chapter 24. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, and the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua sh said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons Abraham and not Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods of your ancestors. Put away the God your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, 
whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods, for it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt and out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went and among all the people through whom we passed, and the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourself that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. This is the word of the Lord. Do you join me, please, in Canticle 21, which is found at the bottom of page 4 in your bulletin or on page 95 in the Book of Common Prayer. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you came, man set us free. You did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death, and open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. The second reading is from Matthew. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all whose brides, those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also saying, Lord, Lord, open up to us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake therefore, for you know neither day nor the night nor the hour. Here ends the reading. (laughs) 
Friends, if uh, Pastor Mark were preaching this sermon, I'm sure he'd say, if you're going to get lit, get lit for Jesus. But we're not going to preach that sermon. Have you ever wondered how this happens? I'm going to air out a good friend of mine right now. His name is Garrett Fonda. He's sitting here in the first row. We're on video on YouTube forever. Um, how, how, how does this happen? Um, do you know that our church is the largest contributor financially to the Vail Interfaith Chapel? Do you know you are the leaders? You're part of the foundation that allows everything else here to happen. Did you know that your church almost exclusively fills this thing? Because Garrett Fonda comes in before church, sometimes without commentary, other times with a little commentary, and every single Sunday, he looks at these wicks, which is a science unto itself, and he looks at the oil, and it's often empty. And Garrett does what so many of you do in our church. He takes care of business, and he fills these lamps. That's the only reason it's lit right now. Absolutely. Don't the candles look better when they're lit? Don't Christians look better when we're lit? Didn't Jesus say, let your light shine before all people so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who's in heaven? There's never been a better time to be bright than today. As I've reflected uh, just a few weeks now, I've never been as sad to leave the Gospel of Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew with parable after parable after teaching, Jesus said, the kingdom of the heavens is like this. This is how you enter the kingdom of the heavens, like a little child. This is what it's like. And parable after story all through this year, only a few more weeks with Matthew. And then, of course, we'll change with the Christian New Year and Advent. Today, as I reflect on the parable of the, bride, uh, the brides and the oil and their lamps, I was drawn to the oil. I get to watch someone worry about that almost every Sunday. What's filling me up right now? With what am I shining? Am I distinctive? Are you distinctive in any way from the rest of the world? Remember, candles look so much better when they're lit. So I reflected a bit. It's been a big week, hasn't it? <laughs> and I'm reflecting on what God's giving me in my lamp. What's the oil? What's, what's inside that's allowing me to stand vertically, to speak at all, to engage the world right now? I have a profound sense of gratitude. God is filling me with gratitude. It's a season of gratitude. I want to say that to look out the window as I drove in this morning, a native Floridian, I felt so thankful to God for the place that we live. And the backdrop that we are so blessed to see every single day. I feel thankful to God for the community in which we live. I got to watch this community all this week. Being an election judge in Avon, I was there for about 25 hours over two days at the Avon polling station, one of four in our county. I've never been as proud to be a member of this community than I was at that time. Can I tell you that the poll workers, the staff, the volunteers were as professional they were as courteous, as generous, as anybody I have met in the Valley. My father worked in the clerk and recorder's office in county government in Florida for 37 years. So I'm a little biased on this point. They were magnificent. And to see the younger people come to vote was a deep joy for me. I love this interfaith community that we have. I want to tell you that there's no place in the country like this place. We've looked. It's just not around. 
What a profound gift we are given to sit in unity and fellowship, to focus on what unites us as believers, as people of faith, to be the spiritual anchor of this community. That's what this place is. And I was reminded of it all week long. I am so grateful for you. I need this church. I serve this church, but I need you. I am so grateful. I took a turn delivering food for Salvation Army. Deacon Mike needs some more delivery folks, and it might be helpful for someone that actually knows where to go, <laughs> because I explored neighborhoods and uh, addresses in Vail that no human has seen in, in years this week. Uh, it might be helpful to actually know where to go uh, in, in terms of the address. You are delivering food without interruption to quarantine families since late February. You're doing that. This church is doing that. I, I prayed that I would be a part of a church like that my whole career. And here we are. I, I'm so grateful. Do you know that there are over 328 million citizens in the United States of America as of 2019? And do you know over 140 million people voted this week? I, I just think that's astounding. I, I'm deeply grateful for our electoral process. Several leaders in other countries criticized this week and I'm like, bring it on. You can criticize all you want because your, your people aren't saying a whole lot. Why? They're terrified. Our people voted. You voted. And exercised your right to help form a perfected, more perfect union. I think that's extraordinary. Can I tell you publicly, I can say it now after the election, I have a great deal of gratitude for our Jen Woolley. Jen is the fifth member of this church to offer... Uh, themselves for public service in our, um, in our elected community of Eagle County. Her own opponent, Matt Schur, complimented Jen for running such a beautiful campaign. And I'd like to add my voice. I was super impressed. She did her homework well. She uh, stayed on content. She reached out to people. And I just want to say how cool that is. She won't be the last person from our church that runs for elective office. And I think it's awesome when people offer themselves in that fashion. So a big thank you to Jen and prayers to everybody that ran, everybody that offers themselves in that way. Can I tell you in my lamp, if it's lit on the altar, there's a great deal of solidarity and empathy. I watched and probably had a dream last night about John King standing in front of a TV set. Can you imagine being John King in the next several days? He's going to walk by any TV set and start touching it, I, just thinking that maps are going to mysteriously pop up, or whoever it is on whatever network you watch, you know, maps popping up. Did you see the urban and rural divide in this election all across the country? Did you see how narrow all these races are? I, I'm having a great deal of solidarity with the United in United States with people of all backgrounds and perspectives right now. Um, the Bible says that we are to rejoice with those who rejoice and to weep with those who weep. This is not our first election and it won't be our last. Some people called me overcome with transcendent rapturous joy. Great. I rejoiced with them. Wow, other people called me brokenhearted and they needed a moment of hope and consolation. Great, I stood right with them. We love them all, we love you all. The body of Christ, the Bible says, we are members interconnected one to another. And I feel that more now than I have ever before in my ordained ministry. Um, 
can I tell you that uh, I feel empathy for our elected officials. <laughs> if anybody offers himself for service right now, holy, wow. Let's pray for them. Do you know in the Anglican tradition, have you noticed we pray for whoever the president is in our, in our prayers, in our normal services? Have you noticed that? Have you noticed it takes our church about a month to get the name right and change it? And so uh, I want a name, and I ask for your prayers for uh, Donald and Melania, uh, for Mike and Karen, for Joe and Jill, for Kamala and Douglas. I think their names are important. Everybody that offers themselves in leadership, I have a great empathy for. Can I tell you that God's giving me a good dose of humility? I think Christians sometimes we get a little, you know, I can get a little, I have strong opinions. Just because I don't preach them to you doesn't mean all of us have strong opinions. Off the altar, ask us. Do you know I realized watching some of the coverage, do you know that however I voted, over 70 million people disagree with me? That's kind of a humbling thought actually. Gosh, if you're libertarian, it's even worse. Ooh, that's a tough go. Now, I want to tell you that Jesus died for every single one of those people. It's the core of our Christian faith that God created the heavens and the earth for all of us. And that struck me with a great deal of force this week. So I believe that I am shining best with a little bit of humility, even within the Christian neighbor, even within our own congregation. I'm coming to you with a great deal of humility. God is sovereign. His will is unfolding. His provisions are beautiful. Our bishop, Kim Lucas, gave a short video message this week, and she said, we do not find our salvation in elections. I appreciated that. People can get voted in and out of office. Guess who doesn't get voted in and out of office? God. The same God that Joshua asked the people to follow all those years ago as Nancy read. The same God who watched his son offer his life for the world. That elicits a great deal of humility in me. Trust is the last thing. Trust in that sovereign God. I need to trust that God has a plan. I need to trust that God can see and hear me. I need to trust that what we have to share can change the lives of people. I need to trust you, as I hope you'll trust me. I think trust is a very important part of the candle right now. Friends, the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus said, be salt and light and leaven, yeast in this world. I believe that we have a beautiful gift to give to the world right now. Candles look really great. And thank you again to Garrett when they're lit and they're shining and they're beautiful. So do you. Let your light shine before all people that they may see your good works your trust, your faith, your hope, and your love. And give glory to our Father in heaven. Amen.
stand. Join me at the bottom of page five as we say together the collect of the day. O oh God, whose blessed Son came into the world that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech thee that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of thy favor and glad, glad to do thy will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united people the multitudes brought out from many kindred and tongues. Endure with the spirit of wisdom those to whom in thy name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through obedience to thy law we may show forth thy praise among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in thee to fail. All which we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Would you join me, please, as so we proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism, for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Would you please be seated as Mike prepares the table.
Would you please stand? Service of Holy Communion continues on page 6 in the bulletin and page 402 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name, saying together, Holy, holy, holy holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we bring you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate the memorial of your son by means of this holy bread and cup. We show forth the sacrifice of his death and proclaim his resurrection until he comes again. Gather us by this holy communion into one body in your son, Jesus Christ, Make us a living sacrifice of praise. By him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The top of page eight, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short. We do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So, be swift to love. Make haste to be kind, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated, everyone, if you would, just very quickly. Do we have birthdays or wedding anniversaries today to celebrate? Then, yes, Kathy, a birthday. Please stand up. Everybody meet Kathy Bellamy, a lay leader and a great servant of the Lord in our church and in this community. Let's celebrate Kathy's life, shall we? The Lord be with you. you. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of life. What a precious and beautiful gift it is for Kathy's life this morning. We are so deeply grateful. Continue to pour out your Holy Spirit upon her health and peace and joy for Kathy and for Mike and their entire family. We ask you to bless Kathy today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday, Kathy. (laughs) Friends, just a few weeks now before uh, the beginning of Advent, the end of the Christian year, uh, we transferred to a new gospel in Advent. Um, I'm going to let Mother Emily, we have some beautiful plans for Advent, by the way. I'm just going to simply say, uh, all of my studies meet. Thank you for your patience last week with the electoral process. Um, All of my studies meet by Zoom. Text, call, email me. Be happy to give you the link. Uh, Even minutes before the study, we're uh, uh, having great studies today. The book of Revelation we're moving through. Seems like a good time. 11.30 to 12.30. And uh, would love to see you. If you're, I think it's a good time just to be in a study, by the way. Uh, I am going to start back my daily uh, meditations uh, on the website. I'm going to start that right around Thanksgiving. We're gonna, it seems like a good time to start that back up. Uh, people have asked me about it. So I'm going to start writing just short little meditations uh, uh, beginning Thanksgiving. You'll see more about that as well. Um, there's going to be a short pledge message from me. On our website here, you'll get an email about that. And thank you, Pledge Drive continues. We're finalizing a draft budget for next year. Oh, the excitement. And uh, uh, we need your support and your partnership. So thank you from the bottom of my heart about all that. Emily, you want to tell us about Advent and what we're doing? I want to tell you about Advent. Please. So first, I need your help. It's not a hard thing. Many of you have moved since you have become members of our church, but you have not updated your physical addresses with us. And in order for Advent to be the gift we want it to be for you all, we need your addresses, not your mailing addresses. We need your physical addresses because we want to invite you to celebrate Advent with us at home as well as worshiping with us on Sunday morning. So, and if you happen to have grandchildren, maybe not if they live in Parker. But if you happen to have grandchildren or children who are members of our church and you want to give us their updated address, we'll be okay with that as well. Um, So we have planned both 
online. We have plans in person to worship with you, and we have plans to provide you with a way to worship within your families. And so I'm excited. This is kind of the stuff I geek out and live for, so help me do that. And, um, and I hope that it will bring you the joy that it has brought us to put it together. And Emily, for those on video or live streaming, can they call you or email you? To they cannot call me because I won't remember their addresses, but if they would please email me or Margie their physical addresses so that we can just confirm that we have the correct information online, that would be great. Thank you. Perfect. And, and I'm just going to, again, just make an assumption. Um, if anybody would like to learn how the science and the art of filling our candles... Proper wick management, critical. Um, we need help. We need help on our altar, our sacristan core. Some are out of town unexpectedly. Uh, ushers, as you are comfortable, as you are comfortable. If anyone would like to step forward here in Vail or in Edwards in a safe, protected environment, the protocols that we are under, we do need your help. So uh, not just candles, of course, but the management of the altar. Uh, ushering in the back, thank you to David Borns this morning, of course, uh, and to Judy uh, and, and Nancy for uh, all of their help. But we need help. And so if, if you don't mind stepping forward, that'd be another great gift you could give us. So thank you very much for that. Let any one of us know, or just talk to Garrett after church, or Judy, uh, or Nancy. They'll tell you everything you need to know, and we can get you trained up. So thank you very much for that, indeed. Would you please stand as Deacon Mike dismisses us? Let us be grateful for the gifts that we've received. Let us go forth into the world in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.